Hey everyone, it's Ali, and oh my god, we broke this build, and we broke the game, and everything's broken. As you can see in this b-roll, we have done some very silly things to Shadow Dagger, Falconeer, and well, I'm going to show you today how to do this for yourself, and how to abuse all this, because yeah, this build just broken. I, I don't have any other way of putting it. You are just going to pretty much experience the single best build that currently class epoch. So today we are going to be talking about all the theory crafting that we've come up with for the past few days. And we're going to put it together into one big video to talk about everything and how to get yourself to this point. As always, the written guide will be updated with all this information. So if you do want to look at this in a written format, it will all be on last epoch tools as well. Before we do go any further, I do want to get some housekeeping out of the way as I've had quite a lot of questions about all this. So I want to very quickly answer some questions for you. The first thing I need to talk about is lethal darkness and punch daggers i need to take back what i said several days ago you want to have both of these at the same time currently we don't know if this is bugged or if this is an intended interaction but currently lethal darkness is applying a sack of shadow dagger and at the same time plunge daggers is also applying a sack of shadow daggers together this means that you are effectively losing half your damage if you're losing either of these points so please just make sure you don't take either of the points out i'm sorry i didn't know about the bug i only learned about the bug the next day and i was like this is stupid and this is not intended or maybe it is intended as they just seemed redundant together. The other thing to mention is I've had a lot of people ask me what to do with Twilight Assault. What you want to do is you do want to eventually get rid of Twilight Assault and you instead want to pick up Loathing. Loathing is going to make it so your Bladestorm slowly seek enemies, which in my opinion personally I thought was going to be pretty bad. But given how Aerial Assault just kind of randomly throws the Blades of Twilight Strike all over the place, this seeking is actually really good and actually helps you do substantially more damage. In my opinion, it's going to make your build feel substantially better and I'd highly recommend that you pick up loathing and obviously drop twilight assault as it doesn't do anything for us anymore we didn't know that twilight assault wasn't going to do anything because we weren't able to test this before the game came out but now that we know that twilight assault is not required for your umbra blades to have three blades and because of your twilight strike giving you six we are good to go the final little bit of housekeeping I want to get out of before we talk about all the changes that we made is why do we specifically take Sub-Zero Intrusion? I've had a lot of people ask me about this. Why are we taking this in Cavernate to Cold while still stacking physical damage? And that's simply due to Umber Blades not actually being any relevant portion of your damage. In this build, in the grand scheme of things, Umber Blades is maybe doing somewhere around 5% of your total damage, maybe 10% or so. And most of the DPS is actually coming from the Shadow Dagger from your Lethal Darkness and the Shadow Daggers from your Plume Daggers. Sub-Zero Intrusion does not convert the physical damage damage of the shadow daggers it only converts the physical damage of umbral blades itself all the points down here on the right and all the points down here on the left are just completely useless and don't really do anything for our build and we have quite a lot of points left over so we might as well just pick up sub-zero intrusion and pick up cold snap strike to make the umbral blades chill sometimes and potentially even freeze giving us a little bit of a defensive layer and because we don't care about the umbral blades damage we don't care that they're not going to scale off of any physical damage we have we instead just want the utility that it provides now, the first thing I want to talk about is going to be Caltrops. I know in the previous video, I said that we were testing and I was curious if Caltrops specifically is actually proccing Skyward Soup as it very much seemed like that on the first day. And I can confirm, yes, in fact, Caltrops is proccing Skyward Soup, making every tick of Caltrops actually give you 10% more CDR on Aerial Assault. We don't know if this is a bug or what, but currently we know that this is 100% guaranteed working. So we do want to keep the research pursuit. Now, let's talk about all the major changes that we're going to be making in this that is going to allow you to do what you see in the current B-roll of just two tapping bosses and just basically plowing through the game like it's nothing. The biggest changes here that we're going to be making is that we are going to be completely dropping both net and puncture in favor of both smoke bomb and Die bomb. Die bomb is going to be the bread and butter of your single target damage now. And instead of the punctures contributing to both making your shadow daggers do more damage through the physical red shred chance and through the armor shred that they applied, as well as them giving you a little bit of damage through the shadow dagger procs, you are instead going to completely rely on both the die bombs and the massive amounts of damage that they're going to do. And the umbra blades are going to come from your aerial assault. Die bomb is a very, very balanced skill. And there's quite a lot to talk about here as there are a lot of multipliers in place that are going to to scale the damage of this i'm going to try my best to walk you through all these multipliers as best i can but this might get a little bit confusing and it might be a little bit too much and in my opinion you don't really need to actually know any of this to be able to play this as long as you just simply follow the build planner which will be linked in the description below as well as follow the written guide as i will be updating the written guide with all this in it i would highly encourage you to look at the faq section as a lot of this is going to be 
explained in there as well. Assuming you just simply make all the changes as shown in the build planner, you should have no problem and you should just be able to go on your merry way and just do a stupid amount of damage. But with that out of the way, I do want to talk about all the multipliers and why this is so broken and why it does so much damage. So the first thing to mention is that Die Bomb has 850 effectiveness of added damage from your Falcon. This is absolutely insane because we specifically have Avian Hurl, which is then giving our Falcon 50% of our throwing damage as Falcon throwing damage. And we have Agile Hunt giving our Falcon one additional throwing damage for four dexterity that we have. Between all this, our Falcon already has a very high amount of added throwing damage. And because of this, and because it's scaled at 850 of effectiveness of added damage, Die Bomb is already going to do a crazy amount of damage. We then have a lot of multipliers that are going to make this even better. First off, we have Flesh and Tearing. This is going to give us physical red shred stacks, meaning that we completely make up all the physical red shred stacks that Puncture are going to do for us, meaning that this already kind of outclasses Puncture just by itself. And the important thing about this is we then get to pick up Red Wings, which is going to give us Crimson Shroud stacks, giving us global bleed chance. And the reason we care about this is because we do so many small hits through both the Tau Daggers, through the Aerial Assault hits, Umbral Blades themselves, through all of the Falcon tricks that we do. Everything we do, we do so many tiny hits that we are going to be able to apply a lot of bleeds very quickly with the 150% global bleed damage that this gives us. That means that we can then take a segmenting strike, meaning we can always have 30 bleeds ready to go for every die bomb, giving us 30% more damage as die bomb is going to do 1% more damage per bleed as on them. We then can also pick up rushing wings for 16% more damage and devastating strike for 72% more damage. Now we don't care about the reduced cooldown duration of this because this is overall going to still give us increased damage due to us using shadows and us needing a little bit of time on die bomb before each use of it to actually have all the shadows ready to go. With on wings of shadow, we are going to make it so all of our shadows, which are typically just shadowy apparitions of us that cast one free ability for us before going away, as you can see from the smoke bomb, they just randomly spawn over the place. It is going to make them also be able to use die bomb. So if I were to generate some shadows like this and then I press die bomb, you will see that I'm going to do a multiple amount of die bombs due to all these shadows also copying it. We specifically want three points in this because we can only have three maximum shadows and on wings of shadow is going to then give us three shadow falcons as additional shadows, meaning that is going to perfectly synergize with the playstyle that we want. The important thing here, the reason we want this is not only because the shadows are effectively giving us free hits, so we are going to effectively 4x our damage if you ignore the 25% less damage of on wings of shadow, but if we specifically have any of the shadow falcons hit with their die bomb and inside of a smoke bomb, they are going to take off again and do damage twice. Meaning if I was just to simply press a die bomb inside of a smoke bomb, I am effectively doing seven hits of die bomb at once. When you combine that with the fact that this already does so much damage with the effectiveness of added damage and all the more damage multipliers, just seven xing our damage through dancing shadows is a little bit broken. Finally, we can get the crit chance of die bomb to be insanely high. We are going to be getting explosive defenses, which is going to give us a critical vulnerability stack per application. And because we have all of our shadow falcons, this immediately hits 10 stacks instantly this is going to give us 20 percent raw crit chance against whatever we fight we are then going to be pairing that with five percent raw base crit chance of handler and on the falcon retreat itself we're going to be taking go for the eyes which is going to turn 75 percent of our crit chance into a falcon crit chance. well now falcon already has a default five percent crit chance so when we combine the five percent crit chance of falconry the 5% crit chance of handler and the 20% crit chance of 10 critical strike vulnerability stacks, our Falcon is already at 30% base critical strike chance. If we then also take an additional 4% critical strike chance because we have a base default 5% critical strike chance and then take the critical strike chance of whatever dagger you might have, your Falcon is easily going to be sitting at around 40% base critical strike chance. That means if you were to get somewhere around 150% increased critical strike chance, that would raise a 40% to 100% giving us guaranteed crits. This is very easily attainable by just simply getting a critical strike roll on your dagger and on your gloves or your rings or your relic or your amulet critical strike chance can be basically rolled anywhere you just around 150 percent total we are then going to guarantee crits meaning we can then benefit from expose weakness now expose weakness is going to make it so your falcon gains 125 percent of your total multiplier as its own critical multiplier on top of what it already has for example i have 300 percent critical multiplier meaning that my falcon is gaining 350 additional free multiplier on top of the 300 percent multiplier that it already has i mean my falcon on every single die bomb just has a guaranteed crit with 600% multiplier, with 850% effectiveness of added damage, and with the critical strike multiplier of needle-like precision, which is going to double dip because it's going to steal our critical strike multiplier and the bird itself is going to get its critical strike multiplier itself. With all this put together, you might be thinking that die bomb is already kind of broken, but it's only going to get worse from here. What we can then do is we can take smoke bomb. 
Now, Smoke Bomb is going to be the obvious clear choice here, simply because of the direct synergy of Dancing Shadows, but at the same time, Smoke Blades giving us up to 20 raw, flat melee and throwing damage, which both apply to Shadow Daggers, due to Shadow Daggers having both melee and throwing as a tag, meaning that this is just a raw 40 extra damage for Shadow Daggers, but the up to 20 throwing damage from this is then going to be converted into 10 throwing damage for Falcon due to the code that converts it. We then also get Umbral Assault, allowing us to get Shadows, meaning that we can very easily synergize with Wings of Shadow, giving us 7 additional hits. To add on to all this, we are also going to be changing our Falcon Reach a little bit around. As you might have seen for the Dive Bomb portion of this, I was mentioning how Go for the Eyes and how Exposed Weakness was giving our Falcon additional crit rolls, which you might have found a little bit weird given that we're specifically looking at the falconry skill. Well, the thing is, is that Dive Bomb specifically uses your falcon. And that falcon is the same falcon from falconry, meaning that anything in falconry is also technically then applying to Dive Bomb itself. That means if you pick up a point like Falconer's Journey, giving our falcon 1% more damage per level and dexterity, that means at level 100 with 100 dexterity, our Dive Bomb is just getting 200% more damage because our falcon is gaining 200% more damage. We then can also pick up Is It a Bird for 15% more damage and with this being tripled for falcon tricks making our falcon tricks actually do a cracked amount of damage and finally we can then pair all this with avian arsenal making it so your falcon benefits from 30 percent of your added throwing damage which stacks up to 10 times meaning your falcon is now going to benefit from 300 percent of your throwing damage as falcon damage giving us a ungodly amount of damage the other thing to mention about this is because obviously we are just increasing falcon damage by quite a lot as i mentioned falcon strikes itself is going to do a lot of damage but then, because we are now scaling Falcon damage like crazy, the Wing Burst of Aerial Assault is actually going to do quite a lot of damage itself. Meaning that, currently, my Aerial Assaults actually do as much damage as a Shadow Dagger application. I've currently seen my Aerial Assault hit for up to 100,000 with a crit, making it be incredibly strong for clearing just by itself. Now, for Aerial Assault, we're going to be making some changes around here too. We're going to be dropping 2 points in Avian Hunter, and we're going to be dropping 3 points in Healing Gust. Instead, we're going to be picking up Coordinate Assault, giving us 1% CDR on Die Bomb for every 10 mana that we have. Currently, I have 116 mana, meaning every time I press Aerial Assault, I just get 11% of my Die Bomb cooldown back. We then are going to go over to the right and pick up Aerial Prowess, which is really, really, really broken. Aerial Prowess is going to give you stacks every time you crit for the next 8 seconds after using Aerial Assault. This can stack up to 36 times, and each of these stacks are going to give you 2% more damage and heal you for 6 health every time you consume them. With Gustbone Guard, that means the healing is going to become Ward, meaning that we now always gain an additional defensive layer. And if we go and pick up Terror Wings, this means that this 72% more damage is then going to apply to Die Bomb, giving you another 72% more damage for Die Bomb, pretty much every single Die Bomb, due to the amount of small hits that happen in this build, allowing us to get 36 Aerial Prowess stacks in literally half a second. Now, this is not just for Die Bomb, because this is going to also be expended by Aerial Assault itself, meaning every aerial assault you do just does 72% more damage and gives you a few hundred ward instantly, making aerial assault literally just as good for clearing as the Umber Blades and the Shadow Daggers themselves, making your clear even better than before when we add the Falcon damage on top of it. Finally, for Umber Blades, we're going to be making some very minor changes. We are going to be dropping Pilot Assaults, we're going to be dropping a point in Jagged Carvings, and we're going to be dropping a point in Cold Tap Strike. We're then going to put a point in Edge of Obscurity to be able to go pick up Umber Remnant, and what it's going to do is that every single shadow, when it expires, is going to drop an Umber Blade. Now, because your Falcon through Aerial Assault is going to already be giving you more blades that you can have, as you can see, they've explode and three of them actually show up, the extra blades that the shadows are going to drop are going to immediately explode through Explosive Blades, instantaneously procking one stack of shadow dagger this is just, just free synergy given that we're always going to be having quite a lot of shadows due to smoke bomb giving us just free umbra blades on top of what we're already doing giving us even more explosions and overall giving us shadow daggers overall when we put all these passive points together we are going to be getting a silly amount of falcon damage which then means a silly amount of aerial assault damage a silly amount of dive bomb damage and a silly amount of falcon strikes damage making our clear and our build just feel unbelievably good in comparison to what it was before our single tower damage is increased by some around tenfold and i just want to quickly show you a screenshot from earlier today where i hit for 1.5 million damage with a dive bomb a dive bomb itself meaning that we can hit for some very crazy amounts of damage and the final thing i want to talk about is going to be the minor gear changes they're going to be making i know you're probably going to be asking ali does this mean we need to get new gear and the answer is no you're basically not changing anything about your gear the only things you want to keep in mind now is you really want to get additional levels of dive bomb this is all going to be put together assuming you have zero levels for dive bomb but ideally if you can get yourself two three or four additional levels for dive bomb you're going to get a lot of extra damage ideally you'd want to get this on a chest plate that also has physical penetration with shadow daggers because it's still a really important role for you and as i mentioned earlier you want to get yourself around 150 percent increased critical strike chance between all of your items put together Again, you can get critical strike chance on your weapon, on your gloves, on your rings, on your relic, and on your amulet, making critical strike chance very easy to get. 
The other thing to mention is that we now don't really care about flat damage on our dagger as much as before. Having flat melee damage is going to be great because it's still going to be buffing your shadow daggers themselves. But because your shadow daggers aren't necessarily all of your single target damage anymore, we can now potentially look for something like physical damage or critical strike multiplier on top of the critical strike chance that we have. Outside of that, there are literally no other changes that you'd want to make to this other than maybe more heavily prioritizing throwing damage. You'd want to make sure you have throwing damage on both of your rings. You'd want to make sure you have throwing damage on your belt. You'd want to make sure you have throwing damage on your relic. And ideally, you'd want to make sure you have throwing damage on your... Because throwing damage is going to scale you so much faster due to all of the added effectiveness of Die Bomb, it now has become our single most important stat by quite a large mile. And that's pretty much all that there is to say about this. As I mentioned in the description below, there'll be a new build planner for this setup, which will include all the changes as well as the written guide having all these changes added to it and there being a FAQ section that's going to attempt to explain all this to you in a written format as well. So if you did miss something about this, you can find it there. The TLDR of how to play this is going to be very simple. Simply just keep spamming Aerial Assault as you were before. Nothing's changed. You're still going to be playing the same build for clearing. And then on bosses, you're still spamming Aerial Assault as much as you can. But you also want to make sure you press your Smoke Bomb on cooldown. And you also want to make sure you press your Die Bomb on cooldown. Outside of that, it's going to feel substantially better, in my opinion, a lot smoother on bosses than the Net Puncture setup actually did. While at the same time doing the next damage that did. If you have any questions on anything we discussed here, feel free to leave a comment in the description below. And I'll be more than happy to help you as soon as I can. You can also come by my Twitch and ask me any questions there. And I'll be more than happy to help you with anything that you're on. If you simply just want to come by Twitch to just be a part of the community, I'll be more than happy to see you there as well. And outside of that, I hope you can enjoy the video and I'll see you all in the next one.